Hi, next up we've got a neon lamp. This lamp came from America. It was actually made in America. They are producing reproduction ones of these which are possibly made in the Far East. But this is a genuine one. Um, I'll show you the etch on the top there. It should say, if we get it round the right way. You can see that G E N E fifty six, which is neon number fifty six. There's the name G E General Electric. There would be a resistor in the base. Uh, this one's made to run on 120 volts. So once again when I put it on the variac I've got to make sure I start it low and not wind it round too much. There's the two elements. A bit closer. The centre element seems to be, um, it's not solid but it's it looks as if it is solid. It's shape the shape of it. There you can see underneath it's not actually solid but it is an electrode made into that shape and you've got the other electrode, the wire, around the outside in a coil. They obviously don't touch. They're very close but they don't touch. And the gas is in there is neon perhaps with a touch of mercury which aids striking. Because sometimes these lamps, if it's dark they won't strike. It's only if you apply a light from a torch or a flashlight on it, they work. And that's also the same with these flicker candles. I've got some flicker candles which are in use and you uh, point a bright torch on them and the, they either start flickering or they stop flickering. But it does have some influence on it. Once again, the good old American um, Edison screw. I think this lamp has, has never been used. Not particularly good solder on, on there. But it's making contact, that's the main thing. As in, the size is very small. I'm, uh, there's my great big hands. And there's the tiny bulb. Um, yeah, there was several makers of these. Chicago Miniature, Westinghouse, and of course GE. Um, whether they all come out of the same factory, I don't know. A lot of them look alike, I must admit. Some had different arrangements inside of the electrodes. Uh, this is just one of them. I can show you other ones. I'm just sort of sort, sorting out stuff to show now. So anyhow, let's have a look at it a light. Screw it in to the good old test thing. Yeah, it's okay. I'm on, not running any juice through there yet. Unplug my lamp. Put the variac in. And we will slowly wind it up. Remember, this is a, only 110. I'm assuming there is a um, resistor in board. Yes, there would be a resistor. If there wasn't a resistor, that would have lit up quite bright straight away. So you have to be very careful. English continental lamps that are neon normally always have a resistor in them. If they don't, they state you must use an external resistor. But some of these American ones, they didn't. So you know, if you've got any of these bulbs, light them with great care, just in case they have not got a resistor. I've even seen them with a voltage on there and still without a resistor. So if you were going to plug those in to that voltage, you will destroy the lamp immediately. So be careful. Um, I'll wind this one up a bit. At the moment we're on about 50 volts 
and winding it up a bit more. We're on 120 now, so I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. We're on 120 volts, which is about the correct voltage. As you can see, not all of the outer electrodes are light. So it could be pushed up a little bit more, but I'm not going to. The centre electrodes are well alight. Actually, the light on the camera shows it as a more bluey type of light than the actual lamp. The lamp itself is quite reddish, reddish orange, but once it's on my camera, it shows it a bit different. Now, wind it down. We're now on 50 volts. So at 50 volts it virtually just strikes. Just strikes at 50 volts. I think the wattage of these bulbs are about half a watt. They're very, very low power. And they were used, I imagine, for indicator lamps. They're, they do turn up from time to time. Um, I was lucky, as I say, I've got a lot of stuff when lamps were cheap. Now, you're, they're asking silly prices, and I mean silly prices. Um, I saw a beehive neon go for about £100, and I think that's crazy. Considering when they came out in England, they were four shillings and five pence, which... Um, well, right, that was dear at the time for a lamp, but nowhere near a hundred pounds. That is just ridiculous. I suppose supply and demand. But anyhow, that's that little lamp. So once again, thanks for looking. Um, any questions, please ask. I'll try and answer them. Don't know what I'm going to put up next. I'll have a look upstairs and see what I'm going to do next. So anyhow, thanks again for your watching. I do appreciate it very much. Thank you again. Thanks.